Good morning. Joining us today is Alejandro Zambrano. He is Senior Market Strategist at DailyFX.com. Alejandro, good morning. Good morning. Okay, forecasts for global monetary policy are in a state of flux. Where do you stand on this? In the case of the U.S., I'm seeing expectations being scaled down. People were expecting quantitative easing three to uh, finish much sooner. Mm -hmm. Um, but as you've probably all seen, you've got weak non-farm payrolls, weak ISM, weak retail sales, okay. a lot of bad data. So I, I'm seeing now quantitative easing and pretty much as they thought from the beginning, which would be maybe 2014, beginning of mm -hmm. 2014. In the case of the Eurozone, uh, weak data, I do expect a uh, recession to, con to continue in the Southern Hemisphere. And I also believe that we're seeing some troubles ahead in France. The issue is this though, if they would cut or not cut interest rates. Uh, I think there's a challenge in a sense that Germany is doing well, mm -hmm. and if they would cut, then it's just going to increase potential asset bubbles in Germany. And it's not necessarily going to help the countries like you know Greece, Italy, and Spain. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say for the next six months, I would expect uh, quantitative easing to continue and possibly a rate cut, but I'm not 100% sure on that. How would this translate into currency movements? Well, this would translate into seeing maybe euro dollar hitting, say, 135. And then from that 135 level, I think numbers in the juice is going to start to come in strong again. And we should drift lower to, say, 121 by the end of the year. There's just one thing, though, and you've probably seen it yourself, and that is metals going lower, mm -hmm. commodities coming lower, and potential high in the stock markets. If this continues, which wouldn't surprise me, we're going to go to a so-called risk-off situation where everyone is going to sell anything with risks. Mm -hmm. This would, of course, support the dollar in either case. So it seems to be that uh, looking beyond you know, one to two months, mm -hmm. we're still going to see a stronger dollar. Okay. In your many years of trading experience, if you had to choose a single indicator for technical analysis, which one would it be? Uh, I would uh, use the pivot point indicator. Why? Because you have, uh, it, it's pretty much uh, indicators. It gives you the average of the prior trading range, and then it's going to give you targets. It's going to give you a range that you can work with. Mm -hmm. If you have it on a daily basis, you can use that to uh, know where to book profits. Uh, most of the time, price is not going to trade much higher than R1 or under S1. Mm -hmm. R1 stands for resistance, S1 stands for support. And if you're more of a long-term trader, so you want to you know, play with the scenario that you're going to see, say, weaker U.S. data, then you can just change that to see a weekly or a monthly. Mm -hmm. So you will just look at that indicator, and you want to make sure that you are buying at a healthy level, so you're not buying where it's expected to reverse due to the pivot point indicator or the right. range that it gives us. I see. Alejandro, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.